All right, today we're talking all about flex players or even anyone that just wants to switch their weapon based on whatever situation they're in. You know, it's really beneficial and really efficient if you can use it the right way and start switching based on the situation uh, that you're in with your team. So to start off first, I wanna talk about any situations that you might be in AR and wanna be pulling out a sub for a hill. You know, that was mainly the common play for flexes in MW2 specifically. There were a few times where subs will pull out ARs and I'll talk about those. But in general, I just wanna to touch basis on all those situations situations where you're in AR and you want to be pulling out that third or maybe even a fourth sub for your team. So obviously you want to be pulling out that sub in close quarters hills. So let's say if we're talking about Fortress here, P4 is a very big hill uh, to be pulling out that third sub for us. If you're trying to break the hill, you're going to be taking a lot of routes, you know, through art or through P2, or even making that double or single jump uh, top here. So there are a lot of situations where you're gonna be in those close quarters, where you're gonna be in small tight rooms, and you wanna be able to have that advantage of having the sub in a gunfight uh, against anyone that might be either playing in the hill or playing you know, top stone here, or even contesting you whether they are playing you know, top dubs here as well. So really important for break in, and even if you're holding, you know, it's not a bad idea to have the sub if you're playing uh, top stone or top dub here as well, like I was saying before. So if you are that AR player and let's say uh, one or two of your players goes down, you can still salvage the situation by using your sub and maybe even getting a two piece that way. But for the most part, uh, you do only want to have three subs here. It's really good to still have ARs, whether you're holding, you know, this P1 lane or whether you're holding back here for P2. Uh, you just want to be making sure that you at least have one of those ARs holding those lanes, but the rest of the guys can play tight, you know, in this entire building. So what about hotel? So the big hills on hotel, again, close quarters, P3 and and P5. Uh, these are two really big hills where you 100% want to be having that third sub in the game. So Dan was really good at pulling out that third sub as the flex for our team and he would always pull it out on these two hills. Specifically for the P3 here, again everything is close quarters. Whether you're trying to contest through the freezer or whether you're trying to contest through TV or catwalk here or even through the side door. All these gunfights are just super SMG dominant because of these tight choke points and doorways uh, that you need to funnel through. So since these are all so close range uh, with the sub, you're just gonna have a little bit more of an advantage in the gunfight rather than you know pulling up and having an L trigger and AR uh, through one of these doorways. Moving on to the P5 here, you know really important areas that you want to control are just super SMG dominant as well. Whether you're talking about rugs here and you're trying to hold off angles for anyone that might be coming through Beacon, or even if we're talking about this circle cut here, there's some really good angles that you can be taking with your subs to deny any sort of positioning uh, that anyone might be trying to take to try and break onto this P5. Even if you're playing you know, inside the hill tight, whether you're on these like couches over here or even on that TV spot that a lot of people play, every gunfight is just really close quarters and you're just better off using a sub rather than that second AR for your team. So you probably see a common theme here where you're trying to pull it out in situations where you're either gonna be playing tight as a team or you're going to tight areas uh, to try and get a gunfight while you're breaking onto the hill. So for Embassy here, P4, really big important hill for subs because of the lanes, let's say we're talking about breaking, if you're trying to break through one of these hallways, super sub heavy, tight hallways. If you're trying to break through uh, the outer part here through planners, again, you're going into a tight area through this stairwell, or even if you're trying to hit out through the back, you're gonna be ending up trying to go through this doorway here. So you're trying to enter into that hill, but because those entrances are so small, you're just more beneficial pulling out that third sub. And you can ask, you know, why would you even pull out an AR in this situation anyway, if you're trying to break, you know, you do wanna be having at least one of those ARs so that you can work off of them. So let's say uh, we're trying to break through uh, these hallways here. What you can do is have your AR back here watching over you as you push into that hallway. If you can coordinate a setup where you're trying to break in through the hallway and he's watching over you, you know, he can always get that trade for you. And let's be honest, even if you do have an AR, it's pretty good close range. So, you know, it's not the most optimal situation, but because the ARs are still decent, you know, close range, he can end up trying to help you in situations where you, let's say you get a kill or you're contesting on in and you can't find uh, that last person in the hill. And even if you're holding for the P4, uh, if you're holding in the hill, whether you're playing super tight credits in one of these corners here, or let's say in bath, or let, let's say you're like in the stairwell here, or just contesting the halls in general, you want to be using that third sub because of how close range uh, those gunfights are going to be. Moving on to the P5 here, uh, not as much for holding. A lot of times while you're holding, you do want to be using two IRs uh, because you want to be trying to put them in some sort of trap here. Let's say you have one guy towards these tennis courts, he can watch uh, for anyone that might be pushing out through P4 this way, or if you have someone uh, at the trucks here towards gas, you can be the one looking out 
for anyone that might be pushing through P2 that way, especially at the beginning of the hills when you're really setting up for the new rotation. But if you find yourself in a situation where you have to be that one on hill or have to be contesting laundry or sitting in a corner red here, definitely be using that sub. If you're gonna be getting so many more kills rather than using uh, the AR in that situation. And now it's, let's say you're breaking and you're pushing one of these outer lanes. Uh, let's say you're pushing through P2 to gas. Uh, it's really important to have these subs once you get over towards gas and can fight this way or if you cut towards laundry and start fighting that way again tight areas tight rooms that you're going to be using uh, those subs to get gunfights in but it's really important to still have that solid ar on your team obviously because you're going to be cut off from people that are either playing palms here trying to cut you off from this position here uh, so you want to be able to contest those types of gunfights so anytime you're really crossing a main lane you do want to have those ars to be contesting that and even on the holding side Obviously, if you're holding a rotation down and you're starting to funnel a team, let's say one way, they're all coming this way, you can hold one angle on the lane and continuously watch this with an AR. That's why you still wanna be having a solid AR for your team because there are situations where they're not even playing those tight positions. They're gonna be playing towards those outer parts of the hill like these crosses and can hold down those lanes for you. And this is probably unique to just Embassy P4, but you would see a lot of teams even pulling out a fourth sub here for when they're actually holding because there weren't a lot of situations where you were taking long-range gunfights like you really shouldn't be playing this back truck here and looking for guns fights this way like there's no point for that gunfight to actually be taken you'd much be better off like in the hill and actually playing one of these corners and making sure that you're holding tight with your team because think about it this way if they're pushing through p2 they have to take that time to actually push and wrap around all the way and then they can end up just eventually dying to you uh just watching the back door here so you're taking an unnecessary gunfight because they have to be taking a lot more time to actually break on in and especially for the first wave there's no need to be taking gunfights you know while you're out here and, and cutting off anyone that might be going through tennis courts you know long-range gunfights that don't need to be taken when you can just be playing tight on the hill now this is a little bit of a different situation when you already got that first wave let's say you got like two or three kills on time and now you're starting to push out after playing tight on time now you can take you know these gunfights where you're playing on these planners and trying to cut off spawners that way so for Mercado here, you might be saying, you know, P3 is close quarters, P2 and P6 are close quarters. Uh, but a lot of times, at least for us, it was only usually on that P4 that we would bring out that third sub. And I'll show you the reason why. So the big reason why was because of the way uh, that you would be able to actually break in and hold this hill. You know, especially for the P2 and P6s, you'd only really have one guy playing inside the hill. The rest of the guys would be playing uh, these outer areas of the map and try and contest or defend those. And these are areas of the map where ARs are pretty beneficial. Like if you're watching this back alley here from the balcony or if you're on the balcony and watching uh, the mid tunnels that's a good gunfight or even if you're playing in hill and are just trying to watch your banana or watch your hedge cut that's a really good AR gunfight too so most of the time we still would be using two subs for that hill and same thing with the p3 like let's say if you had an AR playing uh, top p3 here good AR gunfights here and here it's not really a situation where it's necessary to have that third sub but you know if you wanted to if you're feeling it you know keep it out it's not really gonna hurt you too much we just preferred to have that second AR uh, in these hills but if we're talking about the P4 here, this is a situation where we did like to have the third sub because again, look at the areas that we're trying to hold or contest. Uh, look at P4, really, really close quarters. If we have two guys in there, uh, it's gonna be a really good setup with two subs. If we're trying to break on in or even hold through this back alley, really good sub lane you know you would want your ar to be towards this corner because in case uh, they were spawning towards uh, this brick side you can play for them this way and if they were spawning towards this green side you can play for them this way kind of angle yourself so that you couldn't be seen and then jiggle it help your teammates out give them info uh, while they're trying to push up through the back alley but most of the time these type of gunfights anything that was taking place uh, in this like box over here we're going to be sub dominated gunfights so let's talk about when you might actually want to pull out a third ar and this was pretty rare but if you want to start being a more flexible player especially as a sub and want to be pulling out those ARs there are situations where you can do it specifically for embassy this p2 was a really big hill where we would like to pull out three ARs because of the lanes that you would have to watch uh, for this hill you know there are going to be really dominant four ARs because they were super long range most of the time and then you can have like your only sub playing on p2 uh, holding time and watching you know let's say this p2 doorway but what's really unique about sub switching to ARs is it can be really really situational and you could do it specifically on the fly you know ant was really good at this and he would just pull out the air in any situation 
situation where he saw fit on the fly. And you know, those are cases where you're trying to hold a cross for your team. So let's say, again, we're talking about that P5. Let's say you spawn up, you know, court here. And let's say you're the first one for your team to actually get to this cross so you can hold it. It is your job to hold that cross now because you were first in line to do it. So now because you have that AR, you can hold that cross for your team. It doesn't need to be one of your two main ARs. You can be the one to do that. And then you can switch back to a sub uh, in your next life. This type of situation would happen a lot of times on Mercado. You know, you'd always spawn uh, towards this God Heady here or spawn towards CT and try and play these crosses. If you're in a situation where you're a sub and you can make that heads up play to actually pull out an AR in that situation because you spawn on the cross, that is a, such a huge play because it's going to give such an advantage to your team for actually being able to use an AR on that cross rather than just being a sub. You know, you can actually get the kill in that situation rather than just getting them weak with a sub and getting that info. So pulling out that third sub wasn't that common in control, but there was an important situation to do it. And that happened on hotel, specifically when the B cap has already gone through. So on both sides on offense and defense, it's much more beneficial to be having that third sub out. You know, this control point deals with areas that we were talking about before for P3 and P5, where we said you should be pulling out that third sub. So what do you know? You should be pulling out third sub here because a lot of these gunfights are going to be, you know, those tight close quarters combat fights where you're either going through kitchen going through Beacon or contesting through Beacon or contesting through Kitchen, you're going to be taking those gunfights a lot, especially if you're on defense and you're trying to stay alive in this position here and you want to be making them spawn towards back bedroom over here to have them uh, take longer routes to try and get towards the hill rather than spawning close, you know, back kitchen or inside kitchen themselves. So a ton of gunfights are going to be going down towards this A point where you want to be having that third sub out. So the biggest disclaimer of this whole video is you want to be cognizant of when you should actually be pulling that original gun back out. You know, you don't want to be going into a hill that's mainly AR heavy when you have that third sub still out. Obviously, if you've stayed alive the whole time, you can keep it out. But if you've died multiple times and you keep having that weapon out and it's going into that next hill or going into the hill after that, you do not want to be getting in that cycle because that's just going to be super detrimental for your team as a whole. So thank you guys for making it to the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed this full breakdown on when to be pulling that other weapon if you are a flex player.